Yeah, today is Wednesday, the 5th of February, 2020. And this is our second edition of the program this week. The program is Summit. And my name is Jumoke Michaels. You're welcome. Banji, good to be here um, today. Jumoke, good morning. It's our midweek edition, and uh, I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, today on the program, we'll be talking about um, Nigerians' reaction to the uh, ban on the uh, tricyclists and um, Okada riders in Lagos. A lot of reactions have trailed this um, announcement since it was made last week and then since it actually uh, took effect from the 1st of February. Nigerians have been reacting, Okada riders have been reacting, Kekena Pep riders have been reacting. And so today on the program, we're going to be discussing update on Okada and tricycle ban. And um, joining us this morning is just the apt person to discuss it and take up these issues. We have with us in the studio, the Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Lagos State, the person of Honorable Benga Omotosho. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Good to have you well, join it's us. It's a pleasure to have you. you in our studio. Thank I you. hope I the, just heat, him. the heat is not too much on you. No, it's not too much. <laughs> it's expected, it's uh, normal. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So you expected it? I mean, we expected it. Okay. I mean, if you are dealing with, uh, big business mm. even small business and you are dealing with uh, a decision that has to do with thousands of people mm. you expect that there will be reactions some will love it others will hate it mm. and then uh, you just have to be prepared for both sides mm. so it's been uh, yeah, neither here nor there but i mean it's been a kind of heat that uh, is not uh, uh, not, not not too bad mm. uh, it's not the kind of heat that we cannot take now you cannot take i recall that a couple of years ago that's precisely 2012 during the administration of uh, mr raji fashola Fashola, fashola uh, the transportation act actually spelled out something similar to what your administration has just introduced that's uh, banning okada riders from 495 roads within the state so it's not something new why would the reaction be much more this time around? Yeah, thank you so much for that. It's only new law. The law has been there since 2012, and it was reworked in 2018. Mm -hmm. And what we are simply doing is to say that our people should obey the law. And uh, before we did this, it took us a long time, about uh, three months, advocacy, talking to these guys, going to their parks, and encouraging them to obey the law. But they wouldn't listen. And then we made consultations with uh, so many Lagosians, so many stakeholders, so many interested parties, the Okada tricycle riders themselves, uh, council chairmen, community development associations, and unionists. And everybody agreed that, hmm. I mean, enough was enough, and we had to move in. But most importantly, the security uh, situation did not permit the kind of licensure attitude that we had, Okada people, uh, tricycle people flying all over the place. And government felt that if we allow things to continue that way, that we were going to lose the state. And in losing the state, in such a manner that was uh, I mean, going to be incredible, there was no way government was not going to move in and then uh, take action to stop the kind of uh, lunacy that was going on all over the place. People riding against the traffic, even when the governor's convoy is on the way, they would not uh, obey traffic law. They would just ride against the traffic as if uh, Lagos was becoming a jungle. Mm. And government was not going to sit down and lose the stage. And these same people were complaining that, are you saying there is nothing you can do about this lawlessness? And we continued the advocacy for three months. Mm. But for God's sake, these guys will not listen. So the government will have to say that, I mean, coupled with the number of people dying because of a car accident, and then the security situation, it wasn't looking very fine at all. I mean, the full shot, the big picture that the government was seeing that people were not seeing, government had to move in to say, hey, enough of the nonsense. And that I was exactly what happened. Yeah, I'm surprised that you're talking about advocacy. Because um, from the feedback we get, it's like the decision came suddenly <laughs> on the uh, Okada riders and um, Napokeke Nape riders. That can be correct. That's what is inciting this level of situation. That and that they are actually affected regulations instead of a ban. total ban. What we are doing is restriction. 
Okay. I mean, there are over 6,000 roads in Lagos. And if we are saying that, don't pry just a few hundreds and then some bridges, what is the noise all about? And the areas, if we do the population analysis of Lagos, where Okada and Kekemarua has been restricted, have been restricted, there are areas where you have few little population. The high density areas, these guys are still operating there. I mean, the areas where you have the elite, that is where we are saying they shouldn't go. Victoria Island, Etiosa. So what is the noise all about? I don't understand. So you just feel that, well, there are some people who are crying more than the bereaved. Mm. Even though I sympathize with our people who live in all these areas, that they have to walk long distances, that they have to sweat, and all that. I sympathize with them. But I would want every negotiator to know that this is a decision that was taken after painstaking thought, that was taken several months after advocacy, after thinking about the future of our state, after thinking about the state of things, after thinking about the security situation. And we decided that if we allow things to continue the way they were, that all of us will be the losers. They should please understand that the pains of today will bring yes. gains tomorrow. Now, don't you also see the level of resistance um, at Ijora and other parts of Lagos? Okay, the Okada riders, the Kenapo operators, actually came out and uh, uh, they, 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 they let the hell loose in those places. Do you not think, do you not associate this or link it to the, perhaps, the relaxation of the... the, of, the, the of the of the former, the former. I mean, the previous administration, yeah. and even yours? since may that you took over eight months uh into your administration you're just more or less probably just waking up to see the menace of these uh people do you not see that haven't waited for years and no government is actually paying attention attention to them do you not see that as part of reason why they said no why are you just coming now we've had administration in the past that did not uh restrict us I would not want to speak for the previous administration because I was in part of them. But this administration to which I belong, if we recall the themes agenda, the six pillars of uh, the development plan of uh, the governor, Mr. Bajide Sonwolu, traffic management and transportation is the first pillar. And as soon as he came in, he did uh, an executive order on transportation on traffic management. I extending uh, the closing time of uh, last month, people, and then encouraging our people to obey traffic laws and all that, and telling people that the government will come hard on those who disobey those laws. That is number one. And number two, like I told you, I was personally involved in the advocacy for about three months. Okay. Leaflets, uh, radio jingles, television uh, adverts everywhere telling these people that the Lagos traffic law is alive and well and that it must be obeyed. And going to their parks to give them leaflets. And then showing documentaries on television of Okada tricycle accident victims on their hospital beds. And then calling all stakeholders together to say, look, these are the problems that we have. Let us see what we can do. Do. The government can no longer allow the place to go to the dogs, as it were. And then people agree with the government that something needed to be done. And government still went about. A week before this pronouncement was made, mm -hmm. there was a meeting with local governments, uh, community development associations, uh, representatives of uh, National Union of Road Transport Workers, and ordinary negotiators who were patronizing Okada and Keke Marua, there was a meeting with them. And the, don't forget the decision is a decision of the State Security Council. Okay. So the security aspect of it, it now became so compelling that we had to move immediately. And then we quickly called all these people together that, look, this is what the government would like to do. And there was no dissenting voice. They too agreed, because I haven't seen the figures that people were dying, heads were being smashed, and limbs were being broken. And people were just uh, having their dreams cut short by just because they would like to move from one point to the other and faster. So they agreed that the government should go ahead. 
and the government made an announcement that these guys are restricted on X number of roads and on some bridges. And then, like you said, people now lost their heads in uh, in uh, Apapa, Orile, uh, uh, and uh, so Ijora and such so, uh, places. Well, it is not unexpected that you, when you take away something that a man says is his livelihood, that we see down there. But what I want negotiators to realize is that the violence for a short while that day. First, I sympathize with. Uh, I understand that somebody died. I sympathize with the family, and then it is uh, for any reason. No human being should die for any reason that is not natural. Now, the violence that erupted on that day, does it not tell people that the reason that the government gave for taking this action, does that violence not reinforce it? That these are, we are dealing with a group of people that you cannot account for. A group of people who just uh, strolled into Lagos and flooded the place and were doing their business as if this is a jungle. They do not care about uh, riding against uh, the traffic. They do not care about uh, traffic laws. They do not care about so many other things that they are not supposed to do. They have no homes. They sleep on the street. They sleep on the Alcada and all manner of things. And then government was shouting that, look, there's a security problem here. If you have people you cannot account for community Lagos in those, it will give an impression that if Lagos is one big jungle, mm -hmm. that anybody can come mm -hmm. into and do whatever he likes. And now we are stopping this. And these people went violent. So if they could be that violent on that day, you can now tell me that government made a mistake by moving against them. It, there's no mistake because the kind of violence that they showed on that day, they, 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 they can do something bigger than that. Mm. And it is the potential to be violent, to turn the whole place up down, that the government said must be stopped. And exactly that, that, that's what we have done. So the reaction was not unexpected. But I tell you, I never expected that somebody would die because I don't think that no matter your anger, no matter the case that you have, that what you have to do to prove your case is to spill blood. Mm. That should have been avoided. And is uh, as far as i'm concerned as a human being it's regrettable and uh, i sympathize with the family of the guy who died all right thank you mm. sir you just uh, reiterated the the what the governor said that um, there's serious security challenge Correct. in lagos state and um um, um I'm sorry he made, he said security breaches and safety concerns that actually necessitated the ban but what about these these P, the organizations that, um, um, the, like the registered organizations that uh, went into this um, Okada business. Uh, business of uh, transportation through o Okada. Now, they met up with the specification uh, demanded for by the government. That's a 200, the badge should be specification of 200 CC or, or something like that. Now, they obeyed and kept that regulation. Why would this affect them? Well, first, let me correct the impression that uh, there are organizations that are registered. The government has not registered any organization to come and run Okada business in Lagos. There are discussions going on, talks and all that. Fine. Anybody can approach the government for, for, for discussion. But let me tell you, I even understand that uh, some are claiming that they have invested billions yes. in Okada business. Yes. I do not know. I mean, if you unleash $5 billion, $10 billion, on whatever, on Lagos to pump in Okada. The whole place will be jam-packed by Okada. So I do not know, and I'm not ready to question how much billions that anybody may have invested. But all I know is that the government never signed, signed any agreement with anybody that you should come and run Okada business. Besides, if you go to any country or any place to do business, the first thing you must check as a genuine businessman is the law. As far as I know. You check the law. Does the law permit my business? If it, the law does not permit your business, so why pumping the billions? So all the talk about people uh, having spent billions and all that, they are just superficial and emotional. And uh, we are talking about security. You are talking about human lives. You are talking about the future of our state. And if you are talking about such matters, 
I mean, it's just June is uh, to, to be talking about uh, people spending money. And uh, uh, government has no agreement with them. And then, if you are talking about business and then security, and then things that we can see that eggs have been smashed, limbs have been broken, and then you weigh the two. And I'm telling you, we put them on a very good scale. The argument for security, the argument for safety of the uh, lives of Lagosians outweigh that of whatever money anybody may have claimed to put into it. But don't forget that I said no agreement was signed with any company at all. Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the level of compliance uh, with these uh, new restrictions on since Saturday, 1st of February? I, I, I drove right on Saturday. Honestly, I love what I saw. I've never seen that kind of sanity in Lagos before. My car was not scratched. <laughs> and then uh, nobody complained that uh, he or she Does had a car get scratched each time, each time you go outside? I mean, the place I went to on Saturday. I mean, before, prior to this ban. Yes, the place I went to on I mean, Saturday. Was your car in the past? Yes, the place I went to on I Saturday. Mean, I mean, I'm talking about... Before, before the... Before yeah, the yeah, I'm telling you. Well, the I mean, place the I went to. The car to the, the, be scratched. Almost every day, the, 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 day that, the, uh, the, the area that I went to. Okay. The area that I went to, headquarters of uh, uh, Keke Marua and then uh, Okada. And every time, there is no way you won't have somebody uh, banging your car or somebody scratching it. And uh, I don't stop for such uh, uh, people. But honestly, on Saturday, I didn't see them. I knew that there would be pains. And that is why we went out to appeal to Lagosians to uh, explain to them that they should credit the Babade Sonwulu administration with some milk of compassion, no matter how little. They elected the government to lead them, and that the government is not going to lead them astray. And that is passionate about them, is passionate about Lagos, and it's a milk of compassion, it's a big, and that he is not going to make a law or going to give another that will make them suffer. It is in the interest of all of us. Nobody is saying that it's not going to be painful or another. No, it's going to be painful. And people have said, where are the alternatives? And I said that is the logical question to ask. Very good. That before you do this, provide alternatives. But that they should realize that when you are talking about alternatives and at the same time you have urgent security matters with you, and then people are dying, you are faced with scary figures of uh, people get their ass smashed right in Okada, then of uh, what can happen, a big picture, security picture of what can happen if you don't move fast. First, you don't start talking about alternatives. But then, government has been providing alternatives, and we continue to. Yesterday, we commissioned 14 boats. I went to Badore for the commissioning. We spent less than 30 minutes to get to Falomo. Hmm. And then the day this uh, order took effect, we announced that we were going to rule out palliatives. And uh, we brought out 65 brand new buses on Monday. Apart from about 300 that were down, that were repaired. I, some, some guy was uh, talking on television yesterday that Lagos 65 uh, buses that he laughed. May he continue to laugh. I pray that he should continue to laugh so that he can continue to laugh if any member of his family does not get his or her smashed uh, by riding Okada. What we have done is just people are forgetting. Not the whole of Lagos. Mm. Just his local governments. Mm. And nine LCDs. Yeah. So are you saying that these people that are being restricted from one uh, area, they can always move to another area to continue their job? They can do that. Nobody is saying that they cannot move to where... The, now Lagos talking about those areas that. are not covered. Just okay. Those areas not covered by the restrictions. Are you, is the government not also concerned about the security of lives of people living in those, I mean, congested, I mean, highly densely populated areas? I mean, you are concerned about the elite. You're taking care of the elite, so to speak, by actually withdrawing the services of the Okadas in those six local governments. What about those other very, very, uh, I mean, highly populated areas? where the Okadas have moved to, that's those ban. But, Is but, the government but, concerned about security of lives of people? Very, living very nice question. Before we made this uh, pronouncement, we strengthened security in those areas that you are talking about. Because the part in the question was that, these guys that you are restricting from this area, 
they will simply move to the unrestricted areas. So in the unrestricted areas, we strengthen uh, security. But let me announce to you that since this uh, directive was given, this order, that Okadas have been leaving Lagos in droves. Mm. I saw videos and I saw with my own eyes uh, on the Lagos Ibarra Expressway how people were taking the Okadas out of Lagos. So the unrestricted areas that we fed will be flooded. Mm. Honestly, they are not flooded. They are not flooded. I was in Agege at the weekend. I was in uh, 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 Alimosho, all those places at the weekend. They were not flooded. Because these people knew that, well, the, uh, the situation was not going to be conducive for them mm. to just move like that. Mm. And then they decided to leave. And they've been living. Every day we have uh, pictures of people living with the avocado. And it shows that sanity will return to the place. And it will return. People have been complaining. They are having pains and all that. And others have been saying that the government should stand firm and defend this decision. Now, That's defending this decision, mm. how consistent do you think government is likely to be? We've seen it in the past. It was relaxed over time. I was in a public transport with some people a couple of days ago. Is it not legal state? In a question of weeks, I mean, the Okadas will be back, back on the roads. The Marwas will go back to where they've been restricted from. How consistent do you think government will be on this? With all the powers that the government has, is going to defend this decision. So the government, this administration. yes, the government of uh, Mr. Baide Sanwolu. I do not see anything that it has said it will do that it has not done. It has done this, and in doing this, don't forget it's a decision of the State Security Council. The military people were there, the Navy, the Army, the police, everybody was there, DSS, and they decided that, look, even our own men must be told not to flout this directive. And all in all, it's been about 90-something percent. There is no way you wouldn't have some... Uh, People who can be recalcitrant, people who can uh, just be violent and be pugnacious. But then the government will stand firm on this because everybody has seen the sanity. And I tell you, some people are now, the other day, people came from Ajao estate to my office and then I sent them to, 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 to meet the media. And they met the media and they were shouting, respected men, lawyers, hoteliers, business people, ex council chairmen, that they don't want Okada and Keke Marwa in Ajao estate. And so many of them have been coming. These people made videos and said things like that they don't want them at all. So everybody loves sanity. And people are saying, the Lagos that we used to know, there was no Marua, there was no uh, right. Okada and such things. Uh, we're talking of Lagos things. of 6 million then. Now we have over <laughs> 20 million. Yeah, the population is uh, rising, but that doesn't mean we have to lose our heads. We must stand and maintain. I mean, every big city in the world, even the ones that don't, uh, don't uh, have the kind of problems, peculiar problems that we have here, they wouldn't tolerate this kind of thing at whatever cost mm. we cannot say because people must move from one end of the town to another then we allow this license fair attitude where okada people will be flying all over the place and we are the okada will be used to rob people as uh, they will use our getaway vehicles we have people we have their backs smashed you are going to the airport your passport is smashed, is smashed. i mean nobody no government can stand and allow this to continue besides like i always say Okada and uh, Keke, they are not part of the greater Lagos journey that we have embarked on. We have started. People just, just give us a chance. So it's going to last. If any other administration comes and relaxes it, good luck to, 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 to it. But the administration of its abadies on Olu is not going to go back on this. It's going to stand firm. It's going to be resilient on this. Not even when elections are approaching. No, 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 no. We are not. Uh, and that's another thing that people have been talking about. With due respect to our people who vote during elections. We know the people who vote. Most of the people who are uh, loud in criticizing this decision. Honestly, I wish to tell you that I do not. We have studied the, the figures. They do not even vote. The people who vote, the people who are affected by this or kind of thing, they are saying, go ahead, we are behind you. The people you claim are suffering. We went to market women before we started. 
We went to traders. We went to ordinary Nigeria before this pronouncement was made. And they are in agreement. And those are the people who vote. And in any case, Lagos is about 24 or more million people. How many votes do people cast? Of all the parties, either the winner or the loser, you get less than 5 million votes. I mean, that in itself shows that people don't even want to use their seafood. They don't want to perform their civil responsibility. But government will not say because of that and be blackmailed into doing what is not good for the majority of the people who have uh, voted us into power. All right, let's take some uh, comments coming from the people. Yeah. Please, those who are calling, we can only uh, read out your SMS. We will not pick any call. So please, the phone is ringing, but um, we are only going to take your SMS. So this uh, says he doesn't believe that an agreement was not signed with uh, Lagos state government with um, big projects like Gokada, Ope, Max, uh, and they operate without a process. Does it, does it mean they were operating without a process? Uh, let me just read another one. Uh, he said, please, is Oshodi among? Because police are after Okada at Oshodi. So maybe you can react to those two. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah, you have yeah. already said no agreement was no signed No agreement anyway. was signed with them. If he has any copy, you should please bring it out and show it to us. I understand that uh, the Gokada people are saying that they are going to court. Uh, I think uh, that is uh, a very good uh, move. I praise them uh, for even telling their riders to obey the directive. As soon as the directive was issued and it was going to take effect on Saturday, they issued a statement telling their riders to stay off those roads. And talking about Osho, you know, there is a bridge in Osho. I think the Osho the bridge is included and uh, among uh, where people should not uh, ride uh, Keke or, 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 or Okada. So the, the Osho the bridge is there. Okay. Um, you, earlier on, you spoke about uh, palliatives, and yeah. only two days ago, you spoke about you spoke about uh, sixty-five buses yeah. rolled out by the government, and then the speed boats. Fourteen boats. boats. Mm -hmm. the boats. Now, my question is going to be in two folds. One, do you not think this uh, decision by government is a bit belated? Maybe it should have probably come earlier before the ban. Then again, on palliatives. The people that have more or less, because I know Lagos State has Ministry of Wealth Creation, and uh, I think something related to that. Now, this is a government that prides itself in reducing unemployment. Now, what are you actually going to do to those affected, the law by those who have actually complied with the government's decision on the ban? Do you not also think maybe the government could extend this um, palliative to them by maybe offering loans, soft loans, to convert their marwas? to maybe bosses to alleviate the sufferings of the masses of this uh, state. I, I, I've spoken about uh, those who said uh, palliative should have been introduced before the other. And I said that is the logical thing to do. That is the rational thing to do. That is the sensible thing to do. But then when you weigh the effects of what we are talking about, of the security situation, of uh, the uh, bloodletting that was going on that all that outweighs the arrangement that you may have in mind the palliatives that you may have in mind to roll out that should come before you take the decision and that the government had to take decision and that he knew that it was going to be a painful decision but why are leaders elected they are elected to take hard tough decisions so that at the end of the day, the people will know that uh, they are working for them. And then talking about uh, the palliatives that we are talking about. Uh, like I have uh, told people, I know that three times or so now, Office of Women Affairs and Poverty Elevation has done programs training young women, training people who are jobless, and then empowering them with sewing machines, with all, all manner of uh, trade tools for them to go and start their own trade. And somebody was asking the other day, will you allow your children to do all of that? And I said, yes. The school that I went to, it was compulsory for you to learn a trade. And I learned printing. That has not stopped me. Most of my friends who learn trades, they are richer than me today. They are better known than me. 
So if uh, people are learning a trade, I mean, uh, there, there are graduates today who are tailors yeah. and who are doing very well. So I don't see anything degrading in that. I don't see anything demeaning in that. And like I said, there is Office of Civic Engagement. Civic Engagement even gives out cash to people who don't have any hope at all. I don't have anything to eat for the next one month. They give them money. I've seen that happen several times since I joined the government. There's also the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund okay. that gives money to people after they are sure that you can do, uh, uh, do well with the money. They encourage you to take the money, buy equipment for yourself. I have a tailor. For God's sake, he's employing like 15 people. Now, after taking from LACTF, 5 million. People are there. The thing is online, you go and search. But the thing is that I, the other day I saw a girl who said she writes for Kada and makes 20,000 naira a day. If you are making 20,000 naira a day, for God's sake, <laughs> even bankers will be envious. They will want to ride on Kada. So I don't see the hyperbolic uh, uh, mannerism of some people and trying to dramatize the situation. And then, you know, the government today, I, hundreds of people are going to be inducted into last March today. People who are ready to work, who have been recruited as uh, traffic officers, and all sorts of things they go on in the state. There are people who can work in Ministry of Environment. There are people who can work in Ministry of Works. Road works are all over the place. These are not being carried out by ghosts from uh, somewhere else. These are being carried out by Lagosians, and there are so many other ways for people who want to work to work. But the thing is that if you want to do a job that we fetch you 20,000 a day, I don't know to know how one can help with that. All right, but there is there a way that um, maybe as a follow-up to uh, the fact that we are saying that so many are unemployed in quotes now because of this ban, is there any way that government can push this information you have just mentioned now so that people can know how they can be part of these opportunities. Government has a channel of uh, disseminating information. Everything that we are doing, all government programs, local governments are involved, community development associations are involved, unions are involved, everybody is involved, schools are involved. The thing is that people don't just want to, people are disenchanted. Many are just disappointed and they don't want to listen to anything. Or maybe they just want to be self-employed, not working In for fact, anybody. people who, are, who want to be self-employed, we are encouraging them. That is what I've said about Office of Women Affairs and Poverty Elevation. That's what I've said about Lagos Employment Trust Fund. But people will make it to look as if these are no good avenues for one to, to move forward. And I said that, look, there are people too who are looking for fast money. Mm. Those who want to earn 20,000 naira per day by riding Okada. How that is impossible, I do not know. But they say they do that. So I do not see how any government can help such people who are being hyperbolic about the uh, unemployment situation. All right, let me just take some more messages. Uh, this person said, um, still talking about uh, those who have lost their means of livelihood. And then he was also talking about um, the security breach that this is going to cause, the increase in crime rates that this is going to cause. That, um, are they not, are they, the security issue they are trying to solve is going to bounce back bigger. That's what he's saying, that in the sense of armed robbery and um, social vices that people are going to resort to so as to get a means of livelihood if the government doesn't uh, provide. But I think what you have said has already explained that further. Now, uh, apart from yeah. that, uh, I want to take a bet on that. After about two weeks, mm -hmm. let us go and get the crime statistics from these six local government areas you will see that it will have dropped. Because if you don't have uh, people stabbing you and escaping on Okada, so they will be discouraged. If you don't have people coming to your homes, robbing you, and then escaping on Okada, they will be discouraged. Okay, yes, uh, uh, expanding the scope of this discussion. Sorry, Let's look at Maybe uh, we should take this message. There are so this, many. Go, go. go, go uh -huh. to the, I thought you had finished. <laughs> no, there are so many. He said, can we move our tricycles from VI to other places without police intervention? I think that that question is belated from the explanations you have made already. It said, this person said, I stand with Babajide Sawolu on this Okada restriction, but the keke should not be banned, but restricted. Why rural 
to rural and developing areas. To rural and developing areas. Does um, Keke should be considered for that? What do you say to that, sir? Well, what I want to say is that people should consider that Lagos, the land mass has not increased. Lagos is the smallest but the busiest, the most uh, populated of all the states in the country. If the land mass has not increased, and then we used to move from one point in the rural areas to another, without Okada, without Keke in those days. Are they saying now that we can no longer move? If the pains of riding Keke and uh, Marwa are bigger than the gains, are they saying that we have to... I don't know whether that person lives in the rural areas. Like I said, I've seen... I've been to rural areas. I've been to places where you don't even have roads. The river line areas. Mm -hmm. They organize their own transportation system. Mm -hmm. So the idea of saying that we should allow Keke Marua in some places and other. And don't forget, what we have done is insist local governments inhabited mostly by the elite. Victoria right. Island. Sorry, still on what you're saying now. Uh, this person is saying that uh, what is the government doing about the security agency agents abusing Okada and tricycle riders on the unrestricted areas? Please, if you have any case like that, report it to us. Report it to the police. Everybody knows uh, the, the police, police commissioner. The people, the that's what I'm saying. Are the being alleged. That, that's yes. what I'm saying. Report to the commissioner of police. They know a, a, how to deal with their men. Okay. If I see any personality, I will accost him. I will take his photograph. Some of them will be have taken 30,000 naira that, that. If they don't cooperate, they will seize and confiscate the vehicle or the Okada. Now, I will allow you to confiscate my Okada, but I will follow you to see where you are taking it to. I personally intervene. Maybe though. after you've been beaten mercilessly. They will be, be I, I do not feel that a uh, policeman will want to take an Okada and we first beat the Okada. All right. Uh, uh, my, my, Jumaka, are you through? No. Please go ahead. Okay. This person said, I want to ask, is banning of Okada and Keke Marwa what moves this country forward? I'm sorry to say this. Nigeria is not, things are not working. And it seems government do not know what the masses are facing. That's the level of the suffering he's talking about. And then this person said, do you believe everybody is happy riding bike or tricycle while others are driving cars with AC? Secondly, what is the job the government has created to employees who has no job? What is the name of the job and where is the location and head of the office? You see, I would like yeah, our people website, not to... They're talking about website and maybe contact numbers or something. Yeah, I would like our people not to be superficial about this matter, to look at it deeply. To not say some people are not happy riding Okada while some others are riding uh, cars. We are talking about loss of lives, we are talking about security. They should not reduce it to gutter jokes. They should not reduce it to online jokes on uh, social media. They should look at it as a serious matter. And in any case, like I have said, people felt that after banning, uh, restricting Okada to some routes, that heaven will fall. We have seen saying that since Saturday, heaven has not fallen. And that our people are making ways. And they, they, they are inventive, they are creative, they will make ways. Just this local government. Mm -hmm. And then the employment uh, situation that we were talking about, I mean, the government office is wide open and everybody knows government office. And if you go online, you Google Legal State uh, uh, Government, all these agencies that I'm talking about, they are there. Okay, now expanding, like I said earlier, let's look at the interagency cooperation. I mean, Lagos State. We used to have, I mean, we have LASTRA. Lagos has LASTRA, mm -hmm. where an agency that's dedicated to registering mm -hmm. Lagosians. Do you have the database of the Okala riders and the Kekemara people? I mean, talking about security, can you actually lay your hand on maybe a particular local, local government? See, this is the number of the riders as we speak. And then the identity of the riders. Thank you so much for that question. That exactly is part of why this decision was taken. Mm. When these guys were flooding in, we said, okay, Nigerians are free to come to Lagos anytime, any day. But if you want to ride Okada in Lagos, go and take a rider's card and it is free of charge, they refuse to take. So if you come into Lagos, we cannot have your database. I mean, we can't have you on our database. And then you want to come into Lagos, 
You don't have any home. You don't have anybody you are reporting to. All you have is your Okada. You sleep on it. You defecate on the street. You shower uh, somewhere. And government said but this kind of... Those uh, anomalies you just pointed out would take place, will continue to take place in the other local governments. That's not captured by this restriction. No, no, I'm telling you now that from the figures that we are seeing, from the pictures that we are seeing, instead of moving to other local governments, most of these people are leaving. Leaving. They are leaving. And then, let us just give it a try. And the next one, two weeks, let us go back and see whether they have indeed moved to other local governments or they have moved outside Lagos and whether the crime figures are up or down. All right. This person said, um, government has taken the right step. There should be no going back for security reasons. Good work, Lagos State Government. Please, we have someone who is... Uh, Working you see, along with the you, from Lagos State? <laughs> from Ota. From Ota, okay. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, this is it's just, all it's just about almost the repetition of um, uh, questions. I think you could ask, let me look for an appropriate one to. Now, the, uh, the, just as you very repeatedly said, the governor has also spoken on this issue that he would, there will be no reason to go back, that there's no going back on this ban. But would there be any cause for a review? Maybe somehow. I, I don't think there is any cause for a review. We have got calls from uh, ordinary Lagosians who will people feel uh, are affected by this. I mean, look at ordinary Lagosians sending in SMS and saying the government should stand firm. There will be no reason to review this kind of decision that was taken after about three months of advocacy, of consultation with stakeholders. Party politicians, uh, elders, uh, young people, uh, doctors, we went everywhere. Union people, even the Okada people themselves. We told them that, look, the way you guys are carrying on, there's no government that we allow this kind of license fair attitude, that we allow you flying all over the place and uh, uh, obey, disobeying the law. So they also, we all saw it coming. We also are coming. And then the crime situation, you go to the police, they give you the figures, they are bad. How people who want to go to the uh, uh, outside the country, then you, you get on the bridge in Osho, you are heading for the airport. Just in about two minutes from the airport, you get your bag saying which you have your passport snatched. Or if you resist, you, you get stopped. And then they escape on uh, this two, two wheel uh, uh, evil. I, I am sorry uh, for people, and uh, I sympathize with the people who live by riding Okada. But Okada was becoming a major monster that had to be tamed or removed. Okay, but from they are still, they are even still working. They work in the in inner roads. In road. that, that's what I may mean be saying. That, that, so that, that is the problem that we government. are not making enough money as we used to make. Because from we ride on five the, vehicles, yeah. would you would the, is the government planning increasing the vehicles? Of course, I mean, I, particularly I, I, to those other areas not covered. Apart from the, uh, apart from the sixty five, about three hundred that were bad were repaired and rolled out on Monday. Then we have five hundred and fifty something buses at the ports. We are clearing them, and very soon they will join these ones. And then areas that do not have BRT lanes, they are being fixed. They are going to be there, and then. Taxi cabs are coming. Many people, private investors, they have indicated interest who have seen that look. Keke and uh, Okada, they are not the things that Lagos should be proud to say these are our means of transportation. People are moving in. So people who say they are losing money by investing in Okada, let them invest in taxi cabs, let them invest in buses. So all these alternatives are going to come. And Again, I sympathize with our people for this space. They will be short-lived, I assure them. All right, uh, that's our program today. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. We've been discussing with the Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Lagos State, Honorable Benga Omotosho. Thank you so much, sir, for taking our time to thank be a you, part Madam. of the program. And thank, thank you. you for everyone who has sent in messages and um, that we've been able to read. I, I did not read almost any message this morning. There's, there are so many of them. But I believe that the commissioner has answered your questions. And um, the plea is that you give them time. Let them watch and see how it goes. Thank you so much again, sir. Thank we you so pray much. it's an experiment that will work.
It will work. Mm -hmm. It will work. We are resolved to make it will work. Continue. It will continue. My name is Banjibu Sari. That's been our show today. See you again on Monday. Bye-bye.